is so sweet to trust in Jesus just to take him at his word just to rest upon his promise just to know the said the Lord Jesus 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 how I trust him how I prove him over and over Jesus Jesus precious Jesus hope for grace to trust him more I'm so glad I've learned to trust him precious Jesus my savior and my best friend and I know that you are with me you will be with me to the end call his name tonight Jesus Jesus how I trust you how I prove you over and over Jesus Jesus precious Jesus oh for grace Father God in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ as we prepare to go into the Word of God on tonight Father God we pray that you would speak to your people tonight from the scriptures Lord there are many tonight that's here who are broken in heart, God. This is not an outward healing that they need. They need to be healed inwardly on tonight. Heal every broken heart here tonight. Men together, every broken heart that's here on tonight. Set your people free tonight. Some people are to stand still in their walk with you because their heart has been so broken. They haven't moved on, Lord. Lord, you will help your people tonight. You love your people so much. You care about us deeply on tonight. Minister to every single person under the sound of our voice tonight. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Somebody say, Amen. Glory to God. Strange title, Jesus, the Healer of Broken Hearts. I'm going somewhere with this tonight, and you'll see why I call this Jesus, the Healer of Broken Hearts. I want to take you into the book of Isaiah chapter 61, verses 1, 2, and 3. I want to read this, and then we'll come here and take our time and really go over this. He said, the Spirit of the Lord God is upon me. This is this is Isaiah giving a prophecy about what the Messiah, the Lord Jesus, would, would declare when he comes. The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me because the Lord has anointed me to preach good tidings or good news unto the meek. The meek is the poor. He had sent me, pay attention to this, he had sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, and the opening of the prison to them that are bound. Verse 2, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord and the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all that mourn. Verse 3, to appoint unto them that mourn in Zion, to give unto them beauty for ashes. Praise the name of God. God is going to give somebody here tonight 
beauty for ashes. Lord have mercy. Someone type those words, beauty for ashes. There's a supernatural exchange getting ready to take place in somebody's life. God's about to give you beauty for ashes. Are you listening to me? He's going to take your ashes and he is going to turn around and hand you beauty. Glory to God. That's that's the miracle working power of God. He's going to give you beauty for ashes. Then he's going to give you the oil of joy for mourning. Come on, somebody, someone that's weeping and broken up. He is going to give you the oil of joy. That's the anointing. There is an anointing that brings joy into your life. Glory to God. And then he is going to give you the garment of praise. Lord, have mercy for the spirit of heaviness. God will give you the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness that they might be called trees of righteousness, the planning of the Lord that he might be glorified. Now I want to I wanna fast forward into the New Testament and show you the prophecy that Isaiah saw about the Lord Jesus Christ. He prophesied about Jesus. This is what Isaiah was seeing. He was seeing Jesus being handed a book in the synagogue probably over a thousand years into the future. Now I want to take you to the fulfillment of what Isaiah was prophesying about in the book of Luke chapter 4. And I want to just read verse 18, and then I want to highlight some things to you. Watch this. Jesus in the synagogue, the book was handed to him, and he he began to read Isaiah's prophecy, the Spirit of the Lord. Glory to God. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the gospel, good news, to the poor. Pay attention to this line right here. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted. That's not an outward healing, somebody. Are you listening to me? That's not a broken bone. That's not a blind eye. That's not a deaf ear or or tongue of the dumb. That's not someone that's humped over from paralysis. Are you listening to me? That's not someone who's having to deal with cancer or whatever the case may be. No, he said brokenhearted. This have to do with this have to do with your heart. Come on, somebody. My God, the seed of your your mind, your will, your emotions, the real you. He said, I'm going, he had sent me to heal the brokenhearted. Glory to God. There's some people who don't need a healing from cancer. They don't need a healing from blind eyes, but they need a healing from having a broken heart. They've been living with this thing for years. Tonight is your night for a miracle. Tonight is your night for a breakthrough. Tonight is your night for deliverance. Tonight is your night where the Lord himself is going to take that broken heart, that broken spirit, and mend it back together again. Lord have mercy. He said he had sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives, and recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty them that are bruised. Now, I want to take my time, glory to God, I want to take my time here and explain to you what the word brokenhearted means. I want to take my time and look at it and just read the meaning off to you. Let's look at this word brokenhearted. I want to I want to take the word brokenhearted right there in from uh, from Isaiah chapter sixty one, and look look at what the word brokenhearted means. To rend violently. It it means to wreck. Y'all paying attention to these words here tonight. It means to crush. It means for your for your heart to be shattered. It means for your heart for you to for you for your heart to be hurt, for you to be wounded deeply is what that means. It also means it means to be broken hearted means you are someone who have been crushed. Something in your life happened and it have left you crushed. It have left you broken in pieces something. Listen to me. This stuff is so serious that in Jesus' inaugural speech, his in his declaration that he is the Messiah, he said, the spirit of the Lord God is on me. Put that scripture back up there for me, please. Luke 4, 18. I want you to see this. He had just finished his 40-day fast, 40 days and 40 nights. He had just finished being baptized in the river by John. The 
spirit of God and the power of God had just come on him. And now he's making this announcement on the purpose of the anointing of God in his life. The first thing he said is the spirit of the Lord's on me because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. First and foremost, the second thing he said, that this is how you know this stuff is very important in what's happening in people's lives. Jesus said, he has sent me to heal the brokenhearted. That must be real. That must be real important. That must be a problem worldwide that Jesus is said, this is part of his divine call. For, for all eternity, he had sent me to heal the brokenhearted. As long as the earth remains, he have sent me to heal the brokenhearted. Glory to God. To preach deliverance to the captives, recovering of sight to the blind, to set a liberty to them that are bruised. But I want you to focus on that. He had sent me to heal the brokenhearted. Let's go back to that, to those meanings, Josh. Brokenhearted there. It means to be crushed. It means to break in pieces. It means it means to bruise. It means to tear one's body and shatter one's strength, to break down. Listen to me good. I'm, I'm talking to people here tonight. Life have dealt some of you. Life have dealt some of you some tough blows. Life have dealt some of you some blows to the point you are broken down. You are like a you're like a car who had to pull up the side of the road because something went wrong with the engine. You're like a car who had to pull on the side of the road because you got four flat tires. You are broken down. And when you have a when you have a broken heart, you may smile outwardly. You may you may put on that makeup and, and you know you men can put on the tie and the coat and, and do the whole thing. But inwardly, I'm talking to somebody here tonight inwardly you something took place in your life that have left you like Humpty Dumpty sat on the wall. Humpty Dumpty had a great fall. All the king horses, all the king men, they could not put Humpty together again. Glory to God. But I thank God I'm dealing with the king. I'm not dealing with the king's man. I'm dealing with King Jesus. Jesus can put you back together again. Are you listening to me? I said Jesus can put you back together again. Something have happened in your life. It it might have been the death of a loved one, a child, something. It might have been a divorce, a bitter divorce. It might have been church hurt. Something crazy happened happened in a church. It might have happened among leadership in a church. Are you listening to me? Something have left somebody here tonight crushed. It might have been you got fired off of your job wrongfully. Something happened to you. You might have been taken advantage of. For some of you, it might have been rape, molestation. It, it might have been something or the other. Are you listening to me here tonight? But something have left left you with a broken heart. Your heart is broken. You, you, you've been carrying this thing in your life for years. And listen to me, this part of the verse jumped out at me. He has sent me to bind up the broken heart. That word bind literally means to heal. That word heal, that means he's going to put you back together. Bind means to heal. He's going to put you back together. He's going to put your heart in a, in a, to, to the state that it was in before it was broken. Are you listening to me? Some of you are stuck because you have a broken heart. Something has happened in your life to, to just break you down. All the other parts in your life are working, but you have a broken heart tonight. The Holy Ghost is talking to you. And let me read that meaning again, to rend violently. That's what, so that's what the word broken heart means, to rend violently. Something happened in your life. It's, uh, the Bible says, I mean, this the meanings of it being to wreck, to crush, to be shattered. Something have crushed you. Something have shattered your heart. Something have caused you great pain and, and have caused you great hurt. Y you have been crushed. Put the other one up there, Josh, to, to break in pieces to bruise, to tear one's body, to shatter one's strength, to break down. And you need help tonight. And the Lord wants you to know tonight, I'm anointed to do this. 
He, the Spirit of the Lord's over me because he has anointed me to preach the gospel. He has sent me. Jesus said, I'm sent to heal your broken heart. I'm sent. This is part, this is part of his mission is to heal your broken heart. You cannot, bring it down for me, you cannot go on in your life like this. You can't go on like this. You cannot go on like this. God said, I want to fix this thing once and for all tonight. I want to read your scripture, Psalms 147, verse 3. Listen to what the Bible says about the person with a broken heart tonight. I have good news for you. He healeth the broken in heart. Thank you, Jesus. We focus a lot of, uh, we focus a lot on outward healings. That's that's the part of that's a great part of our ministry. You know that. I'm talking about somebody who's carrying. You are messed up. You you are messed up on the inside. I don't know about you, but I'm gonna just shoot it real tonight. I've been there, Jeff. You know we all been there. Just so beat down, discouraged, rejected, doors slam shut in your face. People who you thought were for you, you found out they were against you. Betrayal. You don't think Jesus' heart was broken that his own disciple turned against him? Come on here, somebody. Put that scripture back up there for me. Psalm 147, verse 3. He heal it. Glory to God. The Holy Spirit's talking to somebody here tonight. He heal it. The broken in heart. You you don't this your problem ain't physical tonight. Your problem is spiritual. Your problem is emotional. Your problem is internal. He healeth the broken in heart. Grady, that's that's a healing you can't see. He healeth the broken in heart and bindeth up their wounds. You see, people are wounded internally as well as outwardly. This is a person who's wounded internally. This is a person who is paralyzed internally. This is a person who's bleeding internally. And God sees it. Man looks up at the outward appearance. But God's looking at your heart. And he knows you've been wounded. You've been suffering with a broken heart for a long time. You've been carrying this thing. Every so often, the minute your life begins to make progress, that broken heart resurfaces because it hadn't been healed. And, and all of a sudden, it throws you back 10 or 15 years again. Who knows what I'm talking about here tonight? I need some honest people with me. Come on, talk to me here. Come on, you know exactly what I'm talking about. And you are bruised, you're broken on the inside. But the Lord says to you tonight, out of Psalms 147, verse 3, put that scripture up there for me. He healeth the broken in heart. I'm your healer tonight. I want to fix your heart tonight. I want to heal you internally tonight. This is an inward healing. You've been carrying this thing. And every now and then the enemy just yanks that chain. And there you go again. He healeth the broken in heart and bindeth up their wounds. Let's go to Jeremiah chapter 30, verse 17. He said, For I will restore health unto thee. And we always take health to just focus on the natural and the outward. He's not just talking about outward healing. He's also talking about internal stuff that people need to be healed of, like that broken heart. He said, I will restore health unto thee, and I will heal thee of thy wounds, said the Lord. Because they called thee an outcast, saying, This is thine home no man seeketh after. But I want you to focus on, I will restore health unto thee. Father God, Touch them right now. Touch them in their hearts. Bring that inner healing, God, that hurt, that pain, that grief, that betrayal, God. 
that person who lied on them and cost them great harm to their reputation. Heal your people tonight. Heal your people tonight, God. Heal your people tonight of this broken heart. Discouragement, God. Heal them tonight, Lord. Complete healing, Jesus. Set them free. Mend together that broken heart. Look, right where you are, just call those people names. Say, God, I let them go. I forgive them. I know they cost me to suffer with a broken heart and cost great pain. Call their names out before the Lord. I release them. I let them go. I let him go. I let her go. I let that family member just call their names out before the Lord and say, Lord, I let them go. I'm moving on. I'm moving on. It's moving on time. It's, it's moving on time tonight. I agree with you. He's going to give you the grace to forgive, to let go, and move on. Glory to God. He's helping a lot of people here. To give in this offering, you can visit us online right now at seanpinder.net forward slash give. You can also give through the ministry PayPal account. That address is paypal.me forward slash Ministries. You can also give through the ministry app. Many of you have it downloaded on your smartphones. You can also give through the ministry Zelle account. The ministry Zell email address is info at seanpender.net. You can also give through the ministry cash app account. The ministry cash app address is the dollar sign, Sean Pender Ministries. You can also text to give. All you have to do is text the letters SPM to the number 45888, and a link will automatically be sent to you. You can also mail your donations into the ministry. Just remember to make your checks and money orders out to Sean Pinder Ministries, P.O. Box 2726, McKinney, Texas, 75070. And listen to all of our wonderful partners that make this broadcast possible. Me and Pastor Amy say, thank you. You are doing an amazing job helping us preach the gospel around the world. Continue to support this work of God. We love you and we appreciate you, Delhi. We will never take you for granted. God bless you. See you on tomorrow on another morning prayer broadcast. God bless. Bye-bye. Join Pastor Sean Pinner in Plano, Texas for three nights of miracles at the Plano Event Center, Tuesday through Thursday, August 13 through 15 at 7 p.m. nightly. Come and experience a life-changing time of anointed worship and powerful preaching and witness the power of God live as souls are saved, the sick are healed, and lives are transformed. Register today. Visit MiracleNights.net to register. This is your time for a miracle. See you there.